they say the game is to be sold, not told. Why are you deciding to make this free when you can make so much money off of it? Man, I ain't in no competition with nobody, man. I ain't in that I ain't in that slave mentality or that or that crab in the bucket mentality of if I make it, I wanna be the only nigga that make it. Nah, it does me joy to know like there's people that look like me from certain backgrounds that's similar to me, even even if they're not from the same background as me, that they also like making it. Mm. I don't feel good. I never feel good knowing that. That is just me in a position and everyone else is looking up at me to try and get to that position. When it's like, nah, I'm going to show you how I did it. And if you find a way to do it better, that worked for me too. But you can, you know what I'm saying? If you want to talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. get comfortable, dog. You comfortable like that? Yeah, I'm chilling. You comfortable like I'm that? Good. All right. He, he look good, Kyron? My guy, Kyron yeah. in the building. Hey, J Hill Podcast. Uh, Mr. J Hill in the building. Um, <clears throat> I had to do this one over because. Oh, no, this is cool. It's good. This See? Is cool. This is cool. Bamboo. We might have to get him a, a package delivered, man. Po <laughs> baby. Yo, uh, I had to do this one over because I personally messed up. You feel me? When I mess up, I, I own it. That's what men do, right? Pope Baby is in the building, Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. Um, phew, listen, this guy is dope. I, I think I said it before. You got niggas who lit, but then niggas who really lit, right? Mm-hmm. Niggas who look lit, and then niggas who really making moves on the ground. This guy's making moves on the ground, sound to, uh, signed to SoundCloud, mm-hmm. right? He's one of the only people that I know personally that got a key to a city. Is a key to the city, right? Damn, yeah, man, basically, yeah. He got a key to the city. All right, bro, I ain't never... Hit nobody with no key to no damn city. I mean, shit. I don't know. Did people have keys to the city when you was coming up? I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. nah. I don't the, know, only nigga, the only other nigga that got a key to the city is Big Boy from Outkast. So that's some. Um, I ain't gonna lie. You come in here, you giving me Big Boy energy. You feel me? Like, oh, on, pause. That probably sound bad. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you, like yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> no, nah, I get what you <laughs> that mean. That was crazy. Yeah, now when I met him, uh, he reminded me of niggas from my from my neighborhood. Because, mm. like, that's shit. That's what he technically is. He's a mm. nigga from the neighborhood. You feel me? Yo, um, what a lot of green. I felt like last time you had on green. Like, what's yeah, the green yeah, about? Yeah, green. Uh, one is my favorite color. Uh, oh, okay. Really. But for me, uh, the color just uh, it symbolized growth. So I'm forever growing. That's crazy because usually when people say they're like green, the color of the money. Oh, yeah. And I, ain't, I mean, the money going to grow too, but <laughs> the more I grow spiritually and like as a person, I feel like money comes with that too. Mm. I interviewed somebody from Savannah, bro, and he was saying uh, how, you know, Savannah's a special place. It's like small, get overlooked a lot, things like that. And I think we spoke yeah. about it last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting the interview, I wanted to um, start with this. You told me about the Hush Puppies, right? You were <laughs> giving me game. Yeah. But what makes Savannah so special to you? To me, uh, it's like asking me, like, what makes my mom special? Mm. You feel me? It's like, it's just what I know. It ain't, it ain't, no matter where I go in the country or in the world, like, I always get that feeling when I come back home, like, bro, this is home. Mm. It ain't, ain't nothing like that feeling. It's, that, it's like, it's like air. Like, it's just what I breathe, you feel me? Oh, that's me? crazy. Like, it's, it's in me. The way I talk, the way I dress, the way I walk, like. Everything. So on some re- relatable shit, like just between, like not between us, but you know, um, moving away from yeah. Savannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was you able to make that transition? Uh, to be fair, it's all the South, so like, okay. it's it's some kind of like close reference to. But like, home where is I'm home, from. like you said. Home but is home, home is home. Though. But because my the the second home being Atlanta, only being three hours away, it's still fairly like relatable. It's small differences because Savannah is it's on the coast. Okay. So we got like a, a Geechee thing going on. But uh with the A, it ain't really that crazy besides the way niggas dress. Mm. What's the difference you think? Uh niggas used to having money up here. So Facts. like <laughs> Facts. it's crazy down here. Like it'd be like oh y'all call it up here. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm from Baltimore, so we call it down. We call it down there. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. uh niggas in the South definitely be getting it. They be getting it. Well, in, in the A. Yeah, definitely in the A. When I when I cause I graduated high school out here. So uh my first time seeing kids with the with the uh with the Ferragamo belt, Balenciaga shoes, Montclair puffers. It was mm-hmm. like, damn boy, y'all niggas got like bread out here. Niggas be scamming. That too. 
uh, with us in Savannah, like we wear uniforms to go to school. Mm. So it's a lot of a lot of kids just happy to wear a white khaki and some white forces their first day of school. So it was just a little small differences like that. What about the um? I feel like where you how how soon did you see that it was so many smoke and mirrors? Because I feel like yeah, you come out here, everybody is lit, everybody look like they getting money. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of easy to fall into the trap to try to like, I don't know, get money or be get it get it quick. Yeah, you, if it, you, it's kind of pressured, like it kind of. Not saying that they pressure you, but sometimes you can feel pressure to look like yeah. everybody else and things yeah, like that. Yeah, when you when you looking in the other people's backyard and you think like, damn, like why ain't mm. why ain't there yet? Facts. How soon did you see? Because but also I feel like is a lot of smoke and mirrors things that we just don't know. People doing people scamming, people want to fix shit. How soon was you able to see that uh, it wasn't everything think, wasn't what you saw? I think it was the first party I went to out mm. here when I when we when we moved out here for high school. I went to a high school party and. Um, I just seen a bunch of niggas in the back. And that's always like a red flag for me when you go to a party. So a bunch of niggas in the back mm-hmm. and all the girls is in the front. Mm. So I, I went to the back just to be curious to see what's going on. And niggas was just plotting on the next scam. And then I would see them same kids on Monday with brand new shoes, brand new. Oh, okay. Like, oh, this is how y'all making two and two make sense. Okay. And that's that's fly. I fuck with it. Do your, do your thing, man. Make some money. And that moment, though, right? Because I think even shit, I'm 30, bro, 31, I, and I still had to had this breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Even at that moment, did that give you some sort of relief of I don't have to chase it as much because they clearly not working for it? Or did it still say I don't give a fuck, I still want it? I mean, in general for me, because I was coming from a whole other city, like I already had a set of like morals and things that was just in me. Mm-hmm. So no matter like what people had going on out here in this city, I knew, like, I grew up on a whole different thing. Like, whatever they got going on ain't got shit to do with me. More power to you. Mm. You feel me? Do your thing. Just don't bring it over here. So you never, re- like, so you you never really felt the pressure of, like, looking fly. Everybody was just looking fly, I guess. Never. My pop sold drugs. Mm. All my father figures sold drugs. So I done seen, like, the glitz and glam, and I done seen that shit go away. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, me, I'm different. I ain't seen none of that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I seen the cars, the hoes, the boats. I didn't seen all that shit. So. Oh, wow. You special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, I ain't, I ain't seen none of that shit, bro. I was, but I also seen it go away. A lot of people ain't had the privilege of seeing what a man can do when he has nothing. Mm, that's a fact. That's true. You know what's funny? Because I had to learn that I was the first person that had to, to see it in mm-hmm. myself that makes sense. I ain't... I wasn't able to learn from somebody else. I had to feel you it. You had to feel it. Yeah, right? Yeah, I had yeah. came down here. I got some bread and it just... And a blink of an eye was just gone. gone. I'm like, shit, hold up. <laughs> let's pause. Let's like let's rewind this motherfucker. We gotta we gotta do some things differently. You start getting them overdraft fees. Bro, shit. <laughs> overdraft fees. Man, my damn ass. Let me tell you about me, right? Shit, since we what's up we talking? I can't out here got my credit going crazy. Mm. Shit was on fire. Like my first time having my almost at an 800. I feel you. I had two jobs, but I'm living like I got two jobs. Me not understanding that. The last thing you want to do is get money and start living like you're getting that money. That's the uh, last yeah. thing you want to do. But I started to like, nah, I'm having fun. I lost one of my jobs. Damn. And it was over for that. That'll do it. And I just started maxing out all my credit cards. Oh, shit. You went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, it was It was over. Like, it was over from mm. that. And then... Because you were still... Was you still trying to, like, sustain what you was already telling yourself that you should be doing? Sort of. Like, kind of, but no. not Like, yeah, no. I mm-hmm. said, yeah, no, because... By the time I um lost the job, I still was like hanging out, I guess, and mm-hmm. then I still had things planned, like going on trips and shit like that. So I had to pay okay. with it for my through my credit cards yeah. and shit like that, and it just it was a dub. Like it was it was but, bad. I, but I ain't gonna hold you though. Being out here in the A, most niggas living on credit. Like, you, but they you, also got a really nice job. Yeah, they kind of like balance that facts. out. If you do it right, you can though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That credit shit. If you if you do it right, you can. Yo. Being from Savannah, you said you love it. Like it's like a breath of fresh air. Indeed. How the hell you get the key to the city? Uh a lot of. I ain't gonna be vague because that's what niggas be doing when they be Talk on podcasts. Me. Uh, for me, uh, I say five years of having a team that wanted just as bad as you. Mm. Five years of doing that in a year of really like putting what you do in the front of the 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 city officials. And then you invite them out to every event to see, like, nothing is going to go wrong with what you got going on. Like, it's going to be a, a, a hundreds of black kids, black and brown kids that ain't never seen no shit like this. And nobody going to get shot. 
and no wild shit gonna happen. Mm. Everyone gonna leave with their chain still on. Mm. Do you do that after a couple of years? Then yeah, they want to see how they can, you know. That's a great be point. a part of that. Talk to me about how do you feel about um because I'm st- still want to stay on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just something that can relate to it, right? When we see people doing charity work or helping out the mm-hmm. homeless and things like that, but they recording it and they document it. Oh no, I don't love it. You don't I, love it. I don't love it, but I. If you want to, it's hard to show. How can I word this? If you want more investors, you kind of got to prove what what you've been doing. And I ask that because I feel like even, I, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong. In your case, you had to invite these officials out for them to see the mm-hmm. positive that you was doing. They got to see the recap. They got to see all that shit. So you got to, for you kind of got to get it on camera. But my biggest, my biggest issue be when people help the homeless is when they give them little Caesars. What's that? Little Caesar pizza, the oh, five dollar box. This nigga. That shit ass. Like if you gonna, like if you <laughs> gonna, crazy. if you gonna help me out, like really, like treat me like a normal person. Don't give me the bullshit. Give me, I, some, I give me some Papa John, some cool. home. It's it's cool when it's hot. Okay. If you gotta bring it down all the way to, let's say the homeless out here, they be under the highways. I mean, you gotta travel all the way, probably forty five minutes, to come give me this cold ass pizza. Yeah, I never even. I don't even know the last time I had Little Caesar. I thought they was out of business or some shit. <laughs> The homeless ain't don't think it's out of business. They getting that shit every goddamn weekend. Okay. So it's crazy because, like, you know how they say, I feel like that is the definition of if it ain't what you know is who you know, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's so many people in the world who's doing positive things, right? But they don't yeah. got the key to the city. Right. Like, I, nigga, I done had cookout for the homeless three years in a row. I ain't get no damn key to the city. But if I had the connects to the people in the office and inviting them out every year. Indeed. Who yeah, knows? I mean, besides even in- inviting them out the one time a year, like we actually build relationships with them. We go mm-hmm. out to dinners with with the with the with the upcoming governors and upcoming uh, city aldermen and all that shit. Like we do the actual like building Groundwork. throughout the entire year. How do you get that connect? Like, how do you even what? Like for somebody that's that's doing something similar to you to that you're doing, but they again overlook and no nobody see the work they're doing. How do you? All start of this that? is all of this is like it's public information. Like mm-hmm. the people that you vote into these positions, they have um, they have contact lines to where you can get in contact with them, or I, you can get in contact with their assistants or whoever is you know uh, stacking up their uh, their reservations and shit like that. And then you just get a day. You get a day, and then you. Like us, we come with a with a whole pitch deck. Mm. So we have like thirty two pages of like what we planning for this year, next year, and the year after that. Mm. And then you just you know just build after that. I feel like sometimes they don't answer the phone though all the time. Oh no, they don't. Sometimes they don't, but you got to be persistent. Mm. You just got to be persistent. So for somebody that's out there grinding, doing the uh, the, the good deeds and the good work. Yeah, sometimes they, sometimes they're not gonna pick up. Sometimes they're not gonna get what you're doing on the first try. Mm. But you still just gotta keep going because that's that what you signed up for. Okay. Especially if you're doing something that ain't never been done before. Like that's the pioneer position. When you're doing something that ain't never been done before, you're gonna do a lot of repeating yourself. Mm. But it's for the better good. So outside of getting the recognition, mm-hmm. right? What are some other benefits of having them on your side? Are they giving money? Are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's uh, they get financial stuff. They help us out with the media, getting like all the media uh, uh, outlets in Savannah, Georgia, or or people that's even with SoundCloud. They help us with other outlets that's in other cities like a New York, a Baltimore, or a LA for me to uh, come on there and you know shed light about what we got going on. Okay, I, actually, I think I saw you in Baltimore. Um, what I you? was. I was in Baltimore. I was. Uh, Cities United invited me and my uh, my partner Donnie to speak to the youth mm. about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, having a sense of community. Mm. You feel me? And that shit was. It was mind blowing to me because for me, like in all the schools I've been in, it's very rare to run into a group of kids that know what they want to do in life. Mm. Because I wasn't one of them kids that knew what I wanted to do in life. I mean, I knew I wanted to work at, like, Blockbuster. But I wasn't, like, I didn't know I can aim so high. No, in fact, I think, yo, Baltimore is a special place because it's so it's so much talent there, bro. Oh, yeah. And I can assume the same for, uh, like, Savannah. I mm-hmm. feel like in Baltimore, we're just missing the opportunities, bro. Like, I feel that. Um, you know they say success is when um, preparation meets opportunity, yep. right? Yep. So a lot of these guys, a lot of these people that I see in Baltimore are, are, are literally prepared, but they just not, they don't have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that was the main reason why I moved, because I wanted to be around endless opportunities. I feel that. You get what I'm saying? Um, but again, it being that hometown, yeah. it feeling so familiar to us, it feeling like a breath of air, 
why would I leave a breath of air when I a fresh a breath? Of, why would I leave fresh air when I don't know if I can even breathe on the other side? Uh, right, because they don't know; they're ignorant to it. You feel me? I feel that, but it's like it is a breath of fresh air and it is like breathing. But sometimes having bigger lungs just help just help mm. you out in the long run. So mm -hmm. sometimes you got to go other places, man. No, I I, I I think it's a fact. I, yeah, I, I think yeah, yeah. it's just it's unfortunate when we see these smaller cities because a lot of people don't. I feel like we are the anomalies for real. Like yeah, a lot of people aren't doing what we doing. Honest, and honestly, I feel like a king ain't a king until they can go to someone else's kingdom, take their crown, and come back. Mm, facts. That's a king to me. That's crazy because even going into that, right? Like you, um, I think you said you had something where people can go online and you was giving them game. Yeah, in, yeah. In the still, music, still the to this industry. day, uh, you could go on. Mm. I believe it's. Uh, Either clubhouse.com or, or clubhousemusic.com. And we have our entire like rollout for this this past year just open source. Like whoever wanna see how we did it, like, it's there. Like the whole playbook. In a in a world full of in a world full of ebooks, mm -hmm. um, buy my course, uh consultations, mm -hmm. they say the game is to be sold, not told. Why are you just... Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Man, I ain't in no competition with nobody, man. Dude, mm -hmm. I ain't in that I ain't in that slave mentality or that or that crab in the bucket mentality of if I make it, I want to be the only nigga that make it. Nah, it does me joy to know like there's people that look like me from certain backgrounds that's similar to me even even if they're not from the same background as me that they also like making it. Mm. I don't feel good I never feel good knowing that that it's just me in a position and everyone else is looking up at me to try and get to that position. When it's like, nah, I'm gonna show you how I did it, and if you find a way to do it better, shit, that worked for me too. Mm. Helps you help someone else, mm. and that way, this issue that I have of, of feeling like I'm always overlooked or or underlooked because I'm from a different city doesn't happen. How do you gauge the success of the program that you have online? Right, so I guess. When you selling it, you can see it by sales. I got this many sales. But when it's free, do you, is it something that you can look at yeah, the downloads? Yeah, we sign up the email. They sign up through email, so we get all the emails. Even even now, because uh, we run a, a consulting agency, too, mm -hmm. for people who need help with their marketing and shit. Like, we giving that the, the first, like, little trial out for free. Mm. And so the people who had who have access to the, um, the open source rollout, they can also sign up for the consulting, too. Damn, that's hard. What are some benefits? Like, tell me some more. Like, if, if, if somebody is out there and they don't know you and they like, oh, this this dude is giving this old whole rollout, but why would I why would I want your rollout? What's so special about you that what's so special about your rollout? Uh I feel honestly, I feel like anybody who say that, like, they can look at where they at mm. and then look at where I'm at and see how much time it took. Mm. And and if we giving it to you right now, that make my five years two years for you. Mm. So I feel like any 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 smart human being that don't want to be in the same place they was at last year, and want to be at a at a better place, and but they don't know how, and we giving it out for free. Shit, just take it. Mm, it won't even hurt. It won't hurt. But at even all. like a rollout of what though? Like, oh, what's... it's a rollout of, of music, content, uh, fashion, clothing brand shit, whatever. Like mm. any anything that you interested in, like we got it. Damn, that's hard. And we just keep up updating it as the year goes. Sheesh, that's hard. So the actual question. It got to be some type of benefit. Like, what are you doing with the emails? What, how are you gaining at all from this? I mean, for me, uh, when, when we get the emails, uh, we could use it. We could help put it toward the music, like where we want to market our videos at and just the data. 
You feel me? So if we get uh, if we get hella emails from that sign up from New York, it's like okay, cool. We should probably do a show out there because mm. they know what we got going on out there. It's already a market out there, and even even if it ain't for music, like a lot of people DM me and say, "Hey, you should be a motivational speaker." Mm. It's like hmm, I ain't think about that. Mm. Maybe that's what people. Some people might like me for more than the music, and that can also be a revenue stream for me. Just mm. go out there and go talk. Damn, so let's let's get into the shit just because just so people can get more familiar. You signed to SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. How the hell you like what were you doing to get the recognition of SoundCloud to say, hey, I want to sign this guy? Uh okay, so I think the beginning of the relationship started in 2019. In 2019, right before the pandemic hit, um, my business partner, he went to New York to uh, just go around offices and, and show people what we had going on in Savannah. His name is Donnie. Uh, previous to music, he had or has a marketing agency called Backyard, and he's mm-hmm. done a hella shit for a bunch of different companies. And he's done a video work for a bunch of different artists from a whole bunch of different labels. So he just has a, a book of relationships from all over the country, basically. So he went to New York. Uh, he stopped by SoundCloud, and he showed them a bunch of artists from Savannah. Uh, a, a good dude named Ar- uh, Albert, Albert Cook. I think he's at a whole nother uh, company now. But, yeah, he went there, showed him uh, my video. It was a thriller. And Albert was like, yo, whatever you're doing with that guy, we want to help out however we can. And the first thing uh, they set me up for was this thing out here in Atlanta called A3C. And for people who don't know what A3C is, it's like... Uh, for a couple of days, it's a bunch of curated events around music, entertainment, tech, shit like that. Almost almost similar to the Revolt Summit and uh, South by Southwest, shit like that. And uh, it was my first paid gig. Mm. First paid gig. They uh, they paid me like a rack to do 15 minutes. For for me, I'll I take that. <laughs> I'll take that any day to just do shit I already do in my in my crib. Especially your first one. Yeah, fir- first paid one. My first paid gig was $50 and I had to drop to another state. Mm. So and they didn't mm. they didn't pay for gas either. So I would take a thousand dollars. So you feel me? I'll take a thousand dollars, but I'm sorry, continue. Yeah. Uh opened up, uh killed the show. And um yeah, we just stayed in email ever since then. And then after the pandemic, really after twenty twenty one, like shit, it was like, shit, what are you guys doing? It was like, shit, we still independent. Um, we not really looking to like sign to no major. We would like to partner with somebody. Uh, versus, like, the possibility of being shelved and, and shit like that. Because I'm still up and coming. Mm-hmm. So those thoughts still come in our mind. Like, well, if they got bigger artists, it's a possibility we might get shelved. But with them, they was starting something new with uh, this thing called Repost, which is where they, they combine the the platform, the streaming platform of SoundCloud, and uh, label services. Mm-hmm. And they bring it together. And it was like, shit. Y'all got something going on. Y'all, y'all organized. Like I said, we do the pitch decks and all of that shit. And uh, yeah, there's a real sense of community around me. There's an actual fan base, an actual foundation. But yeah, there's 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 no really no loss if we it's not and it's if dope. we gamble on that guy. It's crazy because um last time you were saying I was asking you being signed to SoundCloud, would you call yourself a SoundCloud rapper? And you was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying that's how I guess that's where you started. Yeah, I started in 2016. One of the thing I didn't ask you though, I was curious about. What exactly is a SoundCloud artist? If you had, if you had to say, if if we look at a group of rappers like they are SoundCloud rappers, yeah. What exactly would you say that is? I think it's the. I, for me, it's almost the same as saying internet niggas. Because um, mm. these guys, they built up a fan base. A lot of guys from SoundCloud, at least in the SoundCloud rapper era, where it was like heavy, heavy SoundCloud rap. Um, a lot of guys built up their fan base in cities they weren't even from mm. due to the internet okay in soundcloud so for for yachty who's from atlanta a lot of his fan base was in new york through the internet mm. with uzi his shit was in new york la texas all type shit so yeah for me it's it's people cra- who really like built up a base off the internet it's crazy that post you- blogger era so it, we wouldn't it's not a certain genre for example like when, when i nah. hear Backpack rappers, I think that's more of a genre. Yeah, that, no, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. SoundCloud is pretty, uh, SoundCloud rapper, the phrase is pretty broad. 
Okay. Like, it's it's rock stars, rappers, rapidy rap niggas. Like shit, technically Chance the Rapper is a SoundCloud rapper to a degree. It's crazy that the first two people you named was Uzi and Yachty, right? Mm-hmm. When I think of like the ultimate SoundCloud rapper, mm-hmm. is Russ. Oh yeah, 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 that too. Yeah. And Russ is like, bro, Russ is special. Like yeah, he's I'm like sure. the if 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 it was like a poster boy for independence, yeah, it would be Russ. <laughs> yeah, Russ and uh, what well, is La Russell? La Russell was independent. Is he signed to Russ? So he has a um he he has an album deal with Russ with Russ. So okay. once they've done that album, they they can renegotiate. But yeah, yeah I think yeah. both of them like they really like a big big face of being independent. Yeah, and that crazy. shit is so hard. Is hey, bro, you seen La Russell just mm-hmm. had like boxes of CDs? Mm-hmm. And stuff? That shit is tight. These guys are going nuts. I like, like that shit. That makes me want to just be independent forever because you gotta be keeping. A... I think that I think that shit is the biggest flex ever. Like because you we so used to seeing niggas do a money phone. You can post a box of your CDs and then post an empty box of them shits on the next slide. You sold them shits out. That's a money phone to me. That's a money phone. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. That, that shit, shit is hard. Crazy. I love that. Damn. So like, what happened? Um, the tour was that before the deal or that was after the? That deal? was after. After the deal. Well, you, you you went on tour with um Earth Gang. Earth Gang. Mm-hmm. That was after you got the deal. Mm-hmm. A couple months after. A lot of people don't understand that these tours are expensive. Like. Oh yeah. Even me, like I thought at first, I thought like an artist choose artist to mm-hmm. open up for him, and it's like, bet when yeah. it's act- and all actually you have to pay for everything yourself. Mm-hmm. How the hell did that work? Uh, shout out to Zeke and shout out to Since the Eighties who uh helped set up that play. Um, shit. Uh, I'm gonna say how much it cost us. Mm. Um, so instead of a sprinter van, which most uh, rappers do, we did a, a RV. Yeah, cause we wanted everybody to be comfortable, mm-hmm. and I and I roll with a bunch of heavy set, big niggas, big niggas, security yeah. niggas that can help. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> get the job done if you ever need the job to get done. <laughs> it, it, it did, it did. Thanks. So like with that, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with people feeling uncomfortable. I like when I'm on the road, I like for everyone to feel like we on a family trip. Mm-hmm. So we did an RV. Uh, that shit came about about twenty racks, twenty racks RV alone. So then you got to get how the, many dates we doing? It was. 12, I think 12 dates. Okay. I'm going to let you keep going. Right, 20 12. bands for the, for the 20 RV. 20 bands in two weeks. That's just for the RV. That's just for the RV. Okay. Then you got to get the uh, the hotels. Mm. <laughs> Depending on the city, that could range between 500 to 750 Depending on the city. We did, we did Texas all the way to Atlanta. So I think that was an extra about two, three racks. Wait. For... 12 cities? Yeah, because we were still on the RV, so some cities we didn't stay in. Okay, because I'm going to say two, three racks, that's not bad for 12 cities. Yeah, no, nah, some cities we didn't stay in. Okay, that yeah, makes some sense. some cities we didn't stay in. That makes sense. And then, yeah, you got to do food. We uh, out, of, out, of, out of my dime and out of the merch money, we paid for everyone to eat. How was the merch doing on tours? Oh, we sold out. Yeah, we sold out. If you put on a hell of a show and you got a great crowd, they're going to spend money. That's mm. what they came to do. How do the um? How does the, the merch... Even the shows translate to the retention. How was the retention on performing in front of these people and them people actually coming back to support you and listen to your music? Could you tell? Um, you see spikes. So if you on a Spotify or an Apple, you can see spikes in certain cities. Mm-hmm. And if you can uh, remember what city you was in at what date, you can say, okay, this amount of streams came be- came because we did this show in this city, or we did so many ads that there was a spike here, and then that many. That that you can kind of calculate that many fans came to that show because it was already advertised that you was gonna be there. Okay, so question. So wait, what was the number? You didn't tell me the full number for the whole tour. Yeah, about thirty. I mean, that's not too bad if you got it. Yeah, if you got it, a lot of people ain't got it. Yeah. Okay. So what? Um, <laughs> Shit, I'm still getting some of that back. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, how do you know when you're ready? Cause like. Granted, it's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming you can't. It's not. It's not smart to just go on tour. No. Nah, nah, how, nah. how would you know? Where would you measure when you're ready or when you should be looking to go on tour? Uh, that's a good question. I would say, I think the magic number for most upcoming artists before they should go on tour is a at least a hundred thousand monthly listeners. At least a hundred thousand. That, that sounds like a lot, though. No, it is a lot. That's a hundred thousand per month. Of mm. people and doing that twelve times, I mean, I mean, is that one point two million? One point two million listeners a year? 
Damn. So once you hit about that, then you can at least fill up a room of 500. And that's just starting small. Once you're able to do that or hit that 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 benchmark number, you should be good to go on tour. Okay. But some people work different ways. So if you um if you're more of a SoundCloud artist and um and and it's more niche and it's more culture and like you doing you doing a, a room full of thirty people, that can still build. That's just gonna take a little bit longer. You know what I think about when you when we talk about that? Mm-hmm. Not even and, and it's it's under the the rust category maybe. Mm-hmm. Little skies. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with like so. Yeah, Lil, yeah. Bro, I remember so I, we I interviewed Lil Skies before he had blew up. Mm. Even in that moment, bro, he was doing shows with like two, three hundred people easy, mm-hmm. and this was like twelve thousand followers, Skies. Mm-hmm. Like so, when you speak a niche, like oh my god, that yeah. shit, it'd be crazy out here. Yeah, man. So you say one point two a year? Yeah, well, about one point two million stream uh, uh, listeners a year. And you but when you do, do these do tours, you definitely want to do merch. That makes sense. Yeah, you, you got to do merch. How did um? Thinking back on it, I wish I, we we bought more merch to okay. sell. Okay. How is the the Earth Gang connection now? Uh, shit. We still uh in communication with Zeke. Zeke like fam. Uh, I didn't really get to uh see Earth Gang as much because they was moving around so much, and uh they was doing they was doing festivals and they on tour at the same time. Okay. So like <laughs> for us it was damn near just uh playland outside of like working. But how is that that like I feel like if 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 I'm going on tour with somebody or I'm open and I, I'm going on tour with them, I would want to meet them or politic yeah, with them a few yeah, times. Yeah. Sometimes a lot of the times the 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 Earth Gang cause we cause it was another opener on the tour, his name was Mike Dimes. We kicked it with Mike Dimes a good bit. Um with Earth Gang, uh sometimes the niggas just chill on their bus until okay. it was time to go on. You feel me? Like, because they, they tour year round. Okay. So sometimes they do, might not even feel like being around people. <laughs> if I was an artist, I ain't gonna lie to you. I would I would want at least a feature, bro. If I'm going on tour with you, bro, I need people to know that we we got some type of connection. <laughs> I'm just, That's just me. I'm just saying. I know I ain't. I feel you, but it, uh, the the tour came off of a favor. Okay. We Like, even though, like, I'm doing the numbers that I'm doing, like, it still was a gamble on if I was going to put on a good show or not. Mm. So, like... I, it, it would be early on. It would be a little crazy for me to uh, just ask, "Hey, uh, if you if if we gonna go on y'all tour, I gotta lock in a feature." Nah, I gotta start small. Let me prove that I can put on a good show, mm. and then after that, because now when Earth Gang does speak on 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 my show and the people that 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 I work with, it's like, nah, them them boys put on a hell of a show. Okay. Like, uh, I think the last time. Uh, we heard uh, Earth Gang speak about uh, me and the whole uh, clubhouse. They were saying, like, we'd never seen an opener go that crazy. Mm. You feel me? Like, a lot of the nights um, that I was opening on the tour, uh, they would come out to see uh, the cell phone lights that I would have on my set. Because I would tell people on the last song on my set, put your cell phone lights up, and the whole room would fill. Mm-hmm. And nobody else really had that part of their set. It wasn't really part of Earth Gang's set. Tell people put their cell phone lights up when part of Mike Dom set to put their cell phone lights up. They had an incredible set, but that in, that element of the show that was only happening on my set. Wow! So seeing that was just was that something beautiful. being on tour was that something that you look for specifically and say, "Yo, I need to do something different," or was that just already a part of your show? Oh no, we rehearsed it. We rehearsed it that way. No, we didn't did know. You, we okay. didn't know if people were actually going to put this. <laughs> but was it something that you look for intensely? He's like, okay, I, I'm studying. Uh, what's the guy named Dom? Donnie. Donnie. I'm studying. That's the guy that performed. The other guy that opened. Oh, Mike Doms. Mike, 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 Mike Doms. Doms. Yeah. So I'm studying Mike Doms. I'm studying mm-hmm. Earth Gang. Was it something that you intentionally did that I'm looking at these guys' sets and I want to do something that's different and unique for me? Was mm-hmm. that something intentional? Nah, for us, we was thinking, uh, what would it look like on a recap? That's what we were thinking. Okay. Because we knew we only got, we only got 15 minutes. We got a short amount of time to give a first impression. At least, at least we can leave with something that we can show to other people that want to possibly have us on their tour. Like this guy can do this. That's smart. That's smart. So that's we we're, we're just thinking like a year, a year or two ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> you've been on tour, key to the city. I mean, doing so many special things, man. You signed mm-hmm. SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. What's what's going on now? Where are you at now in your career? Right now, shit. I'm just uh, you know, spreading my brand. You know. Popping up on podcasts and having great conversations with people, and really gearing up 
uh, for my debut album, mm. which will be coming out next year. Mm. What's, what's that? That'll be called Grass is Greener. Mm, of course. <laughs> Grass is Greener. And the whole, the whole concept behind it is, you know, being proud of your growth. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, it's, it's famous to tell people to be humble. Mm. Right? And there's nothing wrong with being humble. But I think sometimes it downplays, like, the achievement that you made. It's a difference. <clears throat> you you definitely want to be humble and remember where you yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah, you want to be sure. grounded. Have some sure. humility. But you you also don't want people to get it fucked up either. Get it fucked up. You need up. to know where you came from, but also know how far you came as well. Indeed. And that's a part of, like, you know, giving yourself love. It's a part of, mm-hmm. you know, no... Um, believing in yourself is also mm-hmm. a part of knowing your worth, knowing your value. Absolutely. So even a, a lot of times, the opposite of humble or like cocky or arrogant, mm-hmm. it gets um, it gets what's the word? Uh, when you when we hear it, it's out of context because mm-hmm. we think it's a it negative get misconstrued. thing. Misconstrued. Misconstrued. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? But honestly, like you can have a sense of humility to you yeah. and be grounded, but also know your worth. Yeah, you can have some self-awareness. Exactly. So, yeah, like, no, I like that. I love that. So, I love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. So, I um, I think this is great, bro. I think I think the second time around was better. I like this. Yeah? I like this. I like this. I like this, man. Uh, So, we got the album coming out. What else, man? You got me on this right here. This shit man. is this, cool. This shit is cool. I'm trying. This shit is tight. I don't even really do run for real. This is tight. It's smooth. I'm a champagne sip. This shit is. I told I you, like bro. This. It's smooth, man. I feel like I'm 36. Should have vibe. Nah, this nigga. Nah, it ain't an old nigga drink. It ain't an old nigga drink. It just feel real sophisticated. It, it feel grown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Niggas, you know how niggas always want. They always want to be disrespectful <laughs> to the older niggas. You feel know I me? Mean? Like niggas, I, I feel 36. Why I couldn't be just? Bro, let's make me feel smooth. I feel grown now. I feel like when I say 36, I think about because like where I'm from, a lot of kids don't make it past 18. Mm. So for me, like being 36, like to me, when I think about it, that's like super saying. Okay. Like. You done beat life three decades. <laughs> it still don't sound no better. <laughs> <laughs> it still don't sound, but okay. I beat like I ain't 36, but damn, like, <laughs> shit. like you make you make it sound like something better. Nigga don't want to get to it. Like, <laughs> this shit be war out here, man. This no, shit get, niggas go every day, man, by random shit. Sometimes it don't even be street shit. So like Do that ever like get to you, bro? Like seeing that shit. Like even the shit that's on the internet, like. Uh, for me, uh, I have a moment of transparency. One of my uh, childhood friends I grew up with, he passed away like a couple months before Po Day. He got robbed. And when I, I it's sad because I'm kind of desensitized to it now. Mm. Like, I couldn't even cry at the funeral. Like, it's that, like, it's that bad, I would say. I, I don't, I don't love it, but it's got to a point where it's like, Shit, man, it just be like that sometimes, and that's 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 a that's a terrible feeling, man. Nah, facts. I think for me, honestly, I had to move away from my city the first time because it's because when it's not, I don't want to say just regular people because I'm decent desensitized too in a sense. Mm-hmm. Just being just being a just black, being, yeah, man. Just being a, a nigga in the in this country, honestly, to be real, you not even about where I'm from. It's just we all desensitize. We all need therapy. We all need healing. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I don't think it's not. It's not the everyday crimes. No, no, no. It's no. the people that had potential. The people that I can see myself in. Mm-hmm. Right. So in Baltimore, we had like Rest in Peace G songs. We had a Barbara. I forgot his name. We had it's so many people. A little scooter. Like so many people that was great and destined for greatness. Yeah. Then when got... you see them pass, it hurt mm-hmm. differently because it's like, damn, if he passed, if that happened to him. It could happen to me. It could happen to anybody. Like, even man. Nipsey, like, even the celebrities, like, when you see, not, again, not just everybody, it'd be them special ones, like Nipsey Hustle, the people that you can see yourself in. Yeah. It's like, damn, bro, like, this man was doing good. He was doing this, he was doing yeah. that. So, damn, it could be me, because I feel like it was a part of me in it. Like, when Kobe mm-hmm. passed, it was like, Kobe had this whole mama mentality, and I would like to think I'm something similar. Right. So, when I see Kobe pass with his daughter, it's like, bro, it just get, it's kind of like strips hope away. Bit yeah, by bit. Bit by bit. That's bit crazy. Bit. Man. But you kinda you gotta tell yourself the same way you do it in the in the mirror. Like, yeah, man, that's what I that's what I wake up for. Mm. Every day I get another chance to make it an incredible week. And if I make it an incredible week four times, it's an incredible month. Mm. If I have an incredible month twelve times, that's a hell of a year. Mm. And you wanna just keep having a, a hell of a year. Just keep having a hell of a year. I like that. That was, hard. <laughs> that was great, man. I got the saying on my chest from the tattoo on my chest. It says "Life and Chance," mm. meaning as long as you got air in your, as long as you got air in your lungs, as long as you got life, you got a chance to do whatever. You got a shot. You, know. you got a shot. 
Yo, this is great, dog. I like yeah. this, man. Yeah. Pope Baby, J Hill Podcast. Yo, this shit was amazing. Yeah. Stay tuned. Somebody, I see, listen, I don't even, I'm lying. I be reading the comments. I just don't, I don't respond. You feel me? So I ain't even gonna lie to you. I be reading the comments. I was about to say I don't even read the comments. I be reading the comments. I was reading the comments last time. Mm -hmm. And they was like, man, this shit like some revolt shit. That's what they said. How did you feel about that? I felt good. Because I mean, you feel me? Like I put some effort in. They could tell yeah. they could see the effort. They see it's good quality. Come on, man. Keep fucking with us, man. Keep watching. Keep um listening to the audio. I'm good. Man, be tuned in, man. All of what the YouTubers say. Subscribe, like, share, all of that shit, man. All that. Listen, man, if you fucking with me, I appreciate you. Fuck with this guy right here. Oh God. Don't boot don't bootleg our shit. We independent. We need everything. Everything. All that data, we need all all the financial, we need all that. We need all the love. Mm. Without any of that, we nothing. Nothing. And we never aim to be nothing. We aim to be something in Ooh. this world. Keep talking. So, you know. We aim to have hell of a year. A hell of a year. And we aim to be something in the world. <laughs> Pope baby, baby. Mr. J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out. Yeah.